Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 170 of my modded Victoria playthrough. In this episode, we are going to keep working on our sodium hydroxide production here and get it scaled up to what our factory needs. Enjoy. And I believe we unlocked a different way of making hydrochloric acid, so it might be worth checking to see if this is actually more efficient. So regular hydrochloric acid. Let's just say 100 per second. And that's pretty close. So we'll do another one. This time from salt. We'll say we want 100 of it. We got some byproducts to take care of. Got to turn that sodium sulfate into sodium. And that sodium will go along getting processed. Also, we need to make the sulfuric acid. And I do see an efficiency increase. It's kind of odd how it works. But salt goes in, and sulfuric acid, and out comes sodium sulfate and hydrochloric acid. So that makes the acid that we need, and some byproduct. However, this byproduct, we can split into sodium and sulfur, so that sulfur, at least some of it, will go back into making more acid. So it's sulfur neutral, does require some oxygen. However, what's interesting is 8.5 salt go in and 8.5 sodium come out. Now the sodium is a byproduct, but if we go back here to our method of electrolyzing salt, we only get half of sodium for the salt that goes in. So 7.5 salt goes in and 3.5 sodium comes out. So we only get 50% sodium come out of it. Whereas if we use it to make acid, we get 100%. So this method is a much better way of making hydrochloric acid. Now it may not be enough and we'll have to make it the old fashioned way. But it is important to note that we have a different way of doing it. So there's kind of going to be a lot going on, and a lot of these machines may not be next to each other. Which is always a little annoying. But that's what happens when the factory gets larger and larger as things stop being near each other. So this system will produce chlorine and hydrogen. And we'll need to make the hydrochloric acid at least the least desirable way. The more desirable way will have to be made this way. Now the question is... How much hydrogen is that, and is that like an excessive amount? 576. Let's double check. Just about. And how does that compare to all of this? It's actually kind of a lot. Since we had hydrogen problems before, we probably also want to be able to burn all of this extra hydrogen, or dump it, if necessary, so this doesn't clog up. So let's see what that's going to require. We'll say select energy, fluid burning heat source. The ingredient will be hydrogen. And let's link to see what we're dealing with here. And we need about four of them. Hmm. I feel like the way that it's calculating the neighbor bonus is incorrect. Because the neighbor bonus should say the output. But when you go in here and select neighbor bonus, it's actually changing the input because it should just be increasing the output of heat, not the input as well. Maybe I just don't understand how that works, but it's kind of hard to see with all the text there. But yeah, see the maximum consumption is 5.4 megawatts and that is regardless of what it's actually burning. So we'll need four of them. So we'll just have to keep that in mind, but we'll have the neighbor bonus of two reactors. And there is the output, which we can then come over here and put through a heat exchanger. And then again, through some steam engines. So we need to put these in here and having a nice buffer tank would help.
probably put it on the end where it's most likely to be clogged. And we can have an output there. And simply wait for this to get mostly full. So let's say 16,000. Then going into our two heat exchangers. And then eight steam engines. And it looks like this power pole will reach. And actually this might be slightly more compact. We did it like right here. Although we'll probably want to have a latch here for this pump instead so it looks better on the electrical network. Basically this. Although that pump can always stay connected. And we can just control the output of this with this latch instead. So we will disconnect this logic. So this pump will always run. Just trying to clear that out to make sure these machines can go. Then the logic goes in there. So the set point. This hydrogen gets above 80%. So 16,000. It turns on. Then the reset point is it gets below, let's say 12,000. Or 60%. And it shuts off. So that should take care of all the hydrogen, and then we won't have throughput issues related to that. But we also want to be able to vent it if we have too much. Hmm. And because of that, might need to space things out a bit. And maybe use some old corners tanks here. Let's see, we're going to produce 576. So let's just get rid of these just so we can test this output here. Because we want to check the void. We need about three. So I kind of want to put this all corners tank in here somewhere. So we probably should just space a lot of this out. So let's space this out a bit and kind of position it in the right way. that wire hooked up because we need to have a separate output pump here and this one will be controlled with logic and let's say if it gets above 90% which for this tank is 45,000 it will run and we've got to adjust these other numbers here that's 40 this one is 30. So this is here for in the event that we just cannot burn all of this hydrogen because our factory just doesn't need it and it's not consuming the power. Then we will dump everything into a void, which is a vent it. And we'll put those right there. Although it might look a little nicer if there was some space here. So we'll do something like that. So that should handle the hydrogen. It will still be sent away. This is just here for if the system gets overloaded. And it's better to handle it nearby where it's being produced rather than centralizing it as we have learned with the oxygen generating setup. So we'll need three of these. And we'll need to place them somewhere. This seems like a good spot. It's got an open area next to water. And then we can send the sodium hydroxide along here. So we'll have three outputs we'll need to deal with here. The chlorine, the hydrogen, and the sodium hydroxide. Otherwise, we should have a setup here. It's been a while since uh, that train for glass was sent. Well, it left. 
which is always good news. And it appears like it made its delivery successfully, so it looks like those settings work, at least in the minimum sense. We'll still have to see how it works when the system gets overloaded. Okay, this is a good spot here. Well, kind of. I wanted them to be linear, but we need three of these, and that's really only enough room for two of them. Don't really want to put them up here, because that might get in the way of more resource types. But, oh well, I guess it'll have to be facing down, so we can get enough of these in here. So we'll have like one, and we don't want them too close to where the wires touch. Okay, I think that's most everything. We need to get it all hooked up here. It looks like the wire basically goes where it needs to go. But it might be a little cleaner to connect it in a different way. Hmm, it's interesting. That that wire reach is greater, so it's actually touching that combinator, but that's okay should still work properly. There we go, we can connect all of that. And then have less weirdness going on there. Well, we can connect this all to the ocean and see how that much works, but we do need to make sure that we have separate pipes here. So we gotta get them at the right height. One, two, and three. Probably want to disconnect some of those so we can see them all operate. And this pipe overlaps a little bit. So let's move it a bit so it works. There we go. So we'll get our offshores in there. So when we hook this up, we should be producing a whole bunch of sodium hydroxide. It looks like these machines hold quite a bit of water, so it's going to take a few seconds for them to fill up. Let's see, are they completely connected here? Yeah. Just looks like it takes a lot of water to get them all filled up, but we're maxed out on chlorine gas now. And that's okay because the next step here is to process our salt. One is the more efficient way, making the hydrochloric acid, and one is the less efficient way, electrolyzing it. Either way, both setups are pretty small. So let's just use this space right here. And we're going to have an input of all of that salt coming in. And it looks like since these setups are fairly small, we can just kind of have one belt and have both of these pulling off from each side of it. Let's do the electrolysis on the top. So the belt will come in through here. And chlorine and whatnot comes out. And we'll need a chemical plant to deal with these electrodes. So clean water goes in. And the dirty water goes out. But one hydro plant will be enough for this. Let's see if it'll work like this. Kind of. Let's just place it down here. Then that saline water is going to have to go somewhere, but we could probably just kind of hook it up up there to some machine. Or we could put it moving it down to hook it up with the rest of the system. Because right now these are kind of designed to fill up the pipes completely. 
So we'll probably actually want to go down with it, but whatever. And actually, let's... Kind of move this around. It's not really... In a good position for that. I think this water needed to go elsewhere as well. But, worry about that in a bit. We got lots of little pipes that have to move around. So you leave lots of little... Pipes moving around to kind of... Show all of the things that need to happen here. Well, for one... This pipe can kind of loop around. Kind of put that there. Have it go back in. But this setup needs about 80 water. And we can get that with a pump jack. And because the flow rate is low, a top up valve should work here. And actually, we can kind of put it right here. Make it look square. Just to avoid the byproducts. And we've got this that's got to go somewhere as well. And I think that's it, except for the sodium. And the sodium gets handed off into a liquefier, but we probably want to have a filter asserter here. Just to make sure it's not picking up the sodium. And this one will do the sodium. And the liquefier will output what we need, but we also have to... Grab that purified water. And that will output sodium hydroxide. As far as where, not terribly sure. I'm thinking maybe like up or something. So we'll just uh, put an inserter there. And I think that covers the top half. I think we needed uh, efficiencies all along there. And then to process the salt in the more efficient way. We need to handle it, these chemical plants. Because this is oxygen neutral, we probably should produce our own oxygen here. And it needs purified water as well. So we've got that other water purification plant. Question is, is it enough? It probably would be. Well, let's just go in here. Put the water purification plant. So it's a uh, 0.58. And this is 0.38. So it looks like one plant will be enough for both of these. So we can just uh, get rid of that. We'll need the oxygen. But because we're finding ourselves overloaded on hydrogen, I kind of don't want to do it with electrolysis anymore. Or at least with new setups. Just because we're having trouble getting rid of that hydrogen. And you just see... Right above here, we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff burning away hydrogen. So, we don't really want to add even more. So, we'll just do it with air separation. It's certainly an easier process. Let's see, speed and speed. And in a way, it's actually a little cleaner too, because these air filters will actually clean out some pollution. It's kind of interesting how that works, but they do help out. So we'll have those going, and then the nitrogen. We don't really put nitrogen in any pipes. It's all made on site where it's needed. So because of that, there's kind of no point in sending it anywhere. So we'll just dump it in a flare stack. Let's see, this mostly is good, although these numbers are a little wrong because our salt, we're actually only making uh, 7.5 per second. So we want to come in here and set it by input, set it to 7.5 to get the right numbers. And that's actually kind of important because now it's starting to look like 
We're reducing our machine count even more. Oh, that's so close. No. <laughs> you know what? I think I'll be fine with that being one. We'll see if everything else works out to a one-to-one -one ratio. But this isn't the only place that salt will go. So we'll see how that works. Well, but we can't make these perfect either. So probably just have to build two of those. Because it's two of those, into two, into two. Then we'll just need uh, that group right there. So we do all this and we'll create hydrochloric acid. So this will work so long as we need the hydrochloric acid. Now we could dump the acid if we wanted to. To keep this process going forever. But I don't like dumping stuff. And hydrochloric acid actually doesn't go into that much stuff. It's kind of interesting. It just feels weird to be making acid and then immediately getting rid of it. So this can just be an efficient way of making sodium hydroxide while we actually need that acid. And uh, let's see here if we go down to our existing setup. Where does this acid actually go? It's probably only going to a train, right? Uh, kind of. It's going backwards. Is that going to the alien bacteria? Yes. So it has some uses. Okay, so the first step here is the chemical plant. So we have the belt right here, so we'll try to place this down there. So hydrochloric acid from salt. That seems pretty good. The belt will be right there with a stack inserter going in. The acid will go wherever it's needed. We'll have to figure out the best location. But the output will also be sodium sulfate, which we do need the two electrolyzers for. So since these are facing down, we'll make these facing down as well. Sodium from sodium sulfate. Luckily, they don't really have any inputs or outputs as far as liquids are concerned, which is different. And that will produce sulfur and the sodium. We do need to take that sodium and turn it into sodium hydroxide, which we do with purified water. And I think that's going to increase our purified water requests a little bit. But liquefier 3 works. So we'll just put efficiencies. And then we need a little bit of purified water again. Which I think is going to set this up to where the efficiencies aren't going to work anymore. That we need speeds. Anyway, one liquefier will work for this. So let's try to do some direct insertion. Where you put one right in the middle here. We'll need to have the purified water coming in. But we'll have our two inputs. Might be better in this section. To have long-handed inserters just to max that out. Then we kind of need to do the same thing here. It might work better. This was pointed this way. And the sodium hydroxide goes out there. The other output is sulfur, which go through some one-to-one -one machines here. And it's a little in the way because of this, but that is okay. We can do something like this. Although I probably want to space it out a little bit so the pipes don't intrude on each other. But there's the oxygen, which we'll have to hook up from something. And then a rather small amount of sulfur goes through. 
these don't need to be filter inserters because they're just going to be inserting the sodium in there, but we do need filter inserters for here to make sure that we only grab the sodium. And then we need to go into two more machines here. Oops, let's copy that over because we've got the purified water, which kind of also comes from up here, which I think we can actually kind of do that. And that will create the sulfuric acid, which needs to take the long way around and go back in there. And it should be a smooth process, but whenever you have a situation like this, where it's closed loop. Sometimes you need some to start the process. So we'll put a tank in there. We'll have to grab some sulfur later to start that process, but that's looking pretty good. So then we need the oxygen from three plants and four filters. Since the belts are going to the right, it might make sense to put these machines on the left here. I think we're going to need to space these out. But oxygen goes through. And actually, since we're just dumping this hydrogen, and since we need only a couple of flare stacks, might be slightly cleaner to just put three of them here. So then we need four of these, which we can kind of stuff in there. Let's see, that might be it. Where our input of salt comes in, it'll create the output of hydrochloric acid. Then it goes through the long process of taking care of these byproducts. This creates our sodium and our sulfur. The sodium goes down and gets turned into sodium hydroxide which we want, and get sent on that belt. It looks like that pipe isn't connected, so we probably want to connect that here. I think it was going to be connected above, so that's kind of why it's like that. But it goes down. The sulfur gets turned into sulfur dioxide, which gets turned into the sulfuric acid, which goes around and loops back in for input, and then this supplies the oxygen for the process. And I think that's enough. So now, we kind of want to find a permanent home for this. Doesn't really matter. We just want to have enough room for everything. And actually, since this is the bigger process, probably want to do this one first. Because it'll go somewhere down here. It's not too important where. I believe we need to put all of the modules in all of this. Oh, flare stacks can use modules too. That's interesting. Pollution reducing modules would be quite useful in a flare stack. So it looks like even the pollution modules have a use, but we're not making them right now, so I won't worry about that too much. But that's definitely something to consider for the future. For now, though, we can put the efficiencies in there. And it looks like speed's there. And actually, because this doesn't reduce it below two, we can just do efficiencies. And I think that's all the modules. So we've got to connect all of this. Then we have the top half that has to go in here. Might as well just chuck it in here, right where it makes sense. Could orient this in such a way to make it more square, but I think this is good enough. So we got lots of little random things to hook up. Uh, purified water, but we've got a pipe right there, so... Let's do this. So 
So we can have regular belt right there. So then we have our acid and our saline. Let's see. I know it's kind of funny that we're producing saline water from salination plants. And then I'm going to go through the effort of saving the tiny bit of saline water that that water treatment plant is creating. But the salination plants are kind of their own separate process. So that's kind of why I'm looking at it like this. And instead I'm willing to run some pipes down. So we have saline. And the mineralized water. Mineralized water is actually uh, being sent out right here. So it won't have to go very far. So we can do something like this. And the saline water is a little farther to go. And it's a little awkwardly zigzaggy, but connected it is. So now, let's see about putting all of that sodium hydroxide into one warehouse, probably at the end of this. Yeah, maybe like right here. We'll need some logic hooked up to this. Or this method here, is the least desirable sodium hydroxide method. So we only want this to fill up part of the way. Let's say 10,000. So if it's less than 10,000, the bad way will go. And then we want to give an opportunity for these better methods to run. So we'll have another belt coming in here. Then we can say the same thing, but how about 20,000? However, we have two different ways of operating. One is electrolyzing the salt. However, this is less efficient than with this method here, making the acid. So I kind of want to have its own... Oh, that's so close to being straight there. But I kind of want to have a buffer. So maybe we can do something like that with a smaller strong box here. Put that right there. And actually, let's uh, move it down one square. So we can have some logic here and say if sodium hydroxide is less than 200, so it'll run just enough to top this off. But this bottom method will run all the time. Basically, so long as we need acid, I want this method to run. Even if the factory doesn't need sodium hydroxide at the time. And I see it's kind of dark in here. So let's throw some lights around here to make it a little brighter. Of course, then night vision kicks in, and it's not a problem, but there we go. We can kind of see a little better. Okay, that's all of the sodium hydroxide production, but there's still some leftover processes here. But that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.